Hi, I'm Kathleen Asfahani. Let's talk about human-specific aspects of cortical cell division and lamination. Hundreds of millions of years of nervous system evolution has generated an enormous diversity of brain morphologies that endow each species with unique abilities to perceive and process information from the world around them. Many of the remarkable, higher-order cognitive abilities thought to be unique to humans, such as language and advanced problem-solving, along with other abilities such as attention and perception, can be functionally localized to the neocortex. The neocortex is the most recent part of the cerebral cortex to evolve and has a six-layered structure, with each layer distinguished by its cell types and patterns of connections to other layers. There is great interspecies diversity in cortical anatomy. The three non-human species shown here have a smooth or lysencephalic brain. The gyrification of the human cortex allows for even greater cortical volume than is possible by just expanding the overall volume of the brain. Even when compared to our closest evolutionary relative with a gyroencephalic brain, the chimpanzee, the human cortex is three times larger, because we humans have enormous brains for our body size. Our cortex also demonstrates greater plasticity and greater intraaerial connectivity compared to primates. Human brain development follows many highly conserved mechanisms of mammalian brain development, such as neural stem cell proliferation and neurogenesis. Throughout these processes, unique human neocortical expansion is produced by a combination of human-specific developmental timescales and progenitor cell proliferative capacities that contribute to human-specific cortical cell division and lamination. Early in development, the ventricular zone is composed of symmetrically dividing, self-amplifying neuroepithelial cells that transform into radial glia just before the onset of neurogenesis. The duration of the neuroepithelial self-amplification period is a key determinant of neocortical expansion because it increases the size of the neural progenitor pool. As expected, primates have a longer self-amplification period than rodents, resulting in the eventual development of many more neurons. In primates, the self-amplification period coincides with the generation of early-born neurons, whereas in mice, the amplification period largely ceases before neurogenesis begins. In an organoid study, humans were found to have a much longer period than macaques during which we balance progenitor cell expansion with neurogenesis, contributing to our larger brain. Once neuroepithelial cells transform into radial glia, they are preserved by notch signaling. The longer they stay radial glia, the longer they can produce progeny that will turn into neurons. Humans demonstrate a prolonged period of radial glia maintenance compared to mice using a human-specific signaling pathway involving platelet-derived growth factor D. Interestingly, activating the platelet-derived growth factor D receptor in mice results in the proliferation of radial glia. A 2D organoid study produced yet another human-specific aspect of cortical development timescales, finding that the progenitor transition from deep layer to upper layer neurogenesis occurs later in chimpanzees and humans than in macaques. A 3D organoid experiment confirmed these findings, noting that upper layer lamination began on day 60 of the experiment for macaques, while chimpanzee and human organoids began upper layer lamination later on day 80. The same organoid experiment demonstrated that human progenitor cells have distinct proliferative behaviors at later stages of development, maintaining their proliferative capacity to expand their population while macaque progenitor cells experienced a decline in capacity. Even more important to proliferative capacity is the human-specific existence of three progenitor zones. The developing neocortex is typically divided into the ventricular zone, the subventricular zone, the intermediate zone, and the cortical plate, which is flanked by the subplate and marginal zone. Early in neurogenesis, the two progenitor zones are the ventricular zone and the subventricular zone, with the relative thickness of these layers being similar across species. As neurogenesis proceeds, however, the subventricular zones in humans and primates grow in radial thickness and split into an inner and outer subventricular zone, endowing these species with three progenitor zones in total. The existence of a third progenitor zone is due to the presence of neural progenitors specific to the outer subventricular zone called outer radial glia. Outer radial glia are critical to neocortical expansion. The outer radial glia have a polar morphology, possessing a long basal process, but unlike apical radial glia, they are not connected to the ventricular surface. Importantly, unlike the intermediate progenitors, the basal radial glia can divide symmetrically multiple times, producing many daughter cells and allowing for greater neocortical expansion in the upper layers, as seen here in the human cross-section. In these two cross-sections of a mouse and human embryo with red marking the radial glia and green marking the intermediate progenitors, it can be seen clearly that the outer subventricular zone in humans includes outer radial glia, while the mouse subventricular zone is limited to only intermediate progenitors. However, while outer radial glia were originally found in gyroencephalic neocortex, they have subsequently been found as well in the mouse medial neocortex, but with much lower morphological heterogeneity than in gyroencephalic cortex.
One study found a human-specific gene preferentially expressed in the developing neocortex called Rho GTPase activating protein 11A. The study overexpressed the paralog gene Rho GTPase activating protein 11B in mouse radial glia using in utero electroporation. This resulted in the induction of a proliferative population in the subventricular zone with cells resembling outer radial glia. Very interestingly, the electroporated hemispheres also grew to produce gyrus-like structures, even though the normal mouse brain has a lysencephalic structure. The same team found more than 15 other human-specific genes that may regulate progenitor cell behavior. Studying these genes may shed even more light on human-specific aspects of cortical cell division and lamination.